Lifting Up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, the United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Go ahead, ask it. Hi. <laughs> Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here with James Jacob Prash. Jacob, one of the believers asked insight into Jeremiah's prayer, Jeremiah 15, verses 15 through 21. If you extract the precious from the worthless, you'll become my spoke spokesman. Is there application to the remnant church today in the face of a compromised church? As with any other passage like this or of this nature found in Scripture, and now we're speaking specifically of the Old Testament, the answer is indisputably yes. These things are written for our instruction, we're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. There are three different aspects. The first aspect only applies to Israel and the Jews. The point being, the only Jews who can speak to Israel and to the Jewish people nationally and ethnically are believing Jews, Jews who believe Yeshua is the Messiah. They are the faithful remnant of Israel, and they can speak to the Jewish nation and the Jewish people and need to. So can non-Jews, but it's something specific for the Jews. Secondly, as you rightly point out, it applies to the church, and it certainly applies to the church in the last days. <coughs> Remember, both in the Olivet Discourse and in the book of Revelation, Jesus recycles the themes of the book of Jeremiah and takes what was happening in the days of Jeremiah leading up to the Babylonian captivity, and he recycles it as a type or a picture of what's going to happen in the last days generally, both to Israel and to the church. The whole Babylon motif with the Babylonian Empire coming for the captivity, well, that is replayed in Babylon the Great. The whole idea of the, the, the centrality of the temple in prophecy, we see that again in Revelation, the book of Revelation, chapter 11, and in the Olivet Discourse. We see these same ideas of the rapid proliferation of false prophets in Jeremiah happening again in the last days, again and the Olivet Discourse, and so forth. So what happened in the days of Jeremiah is a picture of the environment the last day's church will find itself in, both concerning Israel, national Israel, and concerning the church at large. But then there's a third dimension of application of this prayer and passage, if you extract the precious from the worthless. It is true from each and every one of us. The more we let the Lord deal with our old nature, and the things that are wrong with us that displease the Lord and hold back his capacity to use us as he wants to. The more he deals with our flesh, our sinful nature, our old nature, the more he's going to be able to reflect his glory and his truth through us. He'll be able to express his, his, himself on the basis of his word He'll be able to make us his spokesman to the unsaved, to the world, even to the backslidden church, and to Israel, if we extract the precious from the worthless in our old lives. Again, it always comes back to the cross, crucify the old nature. So there are three aspects. There's the aspect of dealing with Israel and the Jews, which applies in the last days, just as it did in Jeremiah's day. There's the aspect of of that where you have believers, both Jew and non-Jew, who God will use to speak to Israel and to the Jews. The second is speaking to the church. And the third is our own lives, extract, extracting the precious from the worthless. In each one of us, there are things that God has placed there that is precious. Unfortunately, it is encased in things that are worthless, the old nature. There is an extraction process that takes place. The more by the power of the Spirit that we're taken back to the cross, crucifying the old man and the old woman that the new creation of Jesus can blossom, the more 
aptly, God will be able to speak through us to others, including to the unsaved, certainly to Israel, and certainly to the apostate church. Thank you so much for your question. God bless.